Alright guys, welcome back, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you guys about these lines at the very top of your program, and they're technically called preprocessor directives. Now, you know how I told you guys like in the first video that the reason that we download this piece of software is not only so we can type code in it, but also one of the jobs of this piece of software was basically to take code that we can understand. Of course, we can read this. This is the word include main, and it pretty much translates it into ones and zeros, or in other words, code the computer can understand. Now, this process, the technical term for it is compiling your program. So what these lines are and why I even mentioned that is because before your program compiles, what it does is it includes or pretty much runs your preprocessor processor directives, kind of a tongue twister. But basically, it's going to grab the entire file wherever you tell it to. So it's going to grab stdio.h and stdlib.h, and it's going to substitute them in place right here. Now, after all your preprocessor directives are finished completing, then it's going to go ahead and compile your program. And also, um, like this one right here, this stdio stands for standard input output, and that's what allows us to use that printf because it outputs stuff on the screen. So again, what this include does is basically include another file with well whatever um, we want to put in it. And I'll actually show you guys how to make your own file in just a second. Now, another preprocessor directive you can use other than include is actually one called define. And I'll show you guys how to use that right now. Pretty much type in the, uh, I call it hashtag because I'm stupid Twitter now, but the pound sign, hit define, and what a constant is, is it's basically, it's kind of like a variable, but its value can never change. So whenever you have a variable like tuna, you can set it equal to 21, and then later on you can set it equal to 32. Well, with a constant, you can't change its value. You set it once in your program, and it stays that way forever. So if you want to, um, I don't know, just make a stupid constant, just to show you guys an example called my name. And also, whenever you're making constants, make sure that you make them in all uppercase letters. And this is just so you can easily distinguish a constant from variables in your program. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's just uh, like something all programmers do. So of course, type the name, whatever you want to name your constant, and then after it, it's value. So I'll just say my name is Tuna McButter. And another thing I want to point out is that you don't need a semicolon at the end of any preprocessor directive. So now, basically what's going to happen is anytime we have my name in our program, might as well use it. And what are we going to put? Something stupid like me name B and we'll just write my name right there. So basically, what this preprocessor directive is going to do is it's going to search your program right here, and it's going to look for any instances of the word my name and replace them with the string tuna McButter. So now, if we run this, it says me name be tuna McButter, and of course, it did all of that before your program started compiling. So now, let me go ahead and actually show you guys how to use these in a useful kind of way. So clear this out and clear this out as well and I want to show you guys how to include your own custom made header and we'll actually use one of those constants because why the heck not so the first thing we need to do if we want to include another file is well create a new file so if you go to file new empty file and it says do you want to add it yes and now you pretty much just uh, give it a name I'm gonna name mine Bucky's info and you also want to put dot h it's just a header file and it's just um i'll explain to you guys about the different types of files later on but whenever we're including this give it a dot h extension it means something special to see so hit save and then it says okay pretty much do you want to add it yep and another thing i want to mention is that whenever we named it dot h 
what it means to see is a header file so it creates a new folder called headers and it organizes pretty much all your header files for you by default which is pretty sweet so now we have two files in our program this first one of course is the one main.c the main one we've been working on the whole time and we also have this new buckies.info or excuse me buckiesinfo.h now also take note of these other header files we include were also .h so you know in case you didn't notice that now in this one remember what's going to happen is any code that's in here is pretty much going to be copied and substituted right whenever we write our preprocessor directive so we can um write something like let's just go ahead and define a couple constants so define my name and I'll put my uh, real name this time no more of that tuna butter whatever the heck his name is and I'll just go ahead and define um age 28 so now and we actually don't need to save these because whenever we build and run it automatically saves all your files for you so pretty cool you can do it the lazy way so now we have a little bit of code in this Bucky's info.h and let's go ahead and include it in our main program so copy this do it the lazy way and also delete your entire std lib piece of code right now and as you can see this header and this header are brought in using the brackets and whenever you use brackets it says it pretty much means uh, search the default place where headers are but we can use double quotes and double quotes means search in the same um, directory or the same folder is our code and it's just a little bit faster way to bring it in um, don't really worry about it right now and of course type the name of your file so again it's gonna include this one this one and then it's pretty much gonna copy this and paste it right in here that's like pretty much what it does actually I should probably use that analogy earlier on and then it runs your program so now that we have this info brought in let's make a cool program with it I'll show you guys how to make a program that calculates the age of girls I'm allowed to date so I'm like alright am I allowed to date a girl who's like 24 if I'm 28 well I don't know what about a girl who's 17 probably not so you know the formula for it is this go ahead and make a variable called int girls age and the formula for this is actually um and I'm gonna do some math and I know I didn't talk to you about the um, mathematical operators of C yet but you guys will understand this you take the age and this is my age which is 28 and you divide it by 2 of course to divide is just the uh, forward slash and I'll talk like I said talk about that later on so now of course this is 14 for me and you take that and add 7 and that's the age of girls anyone is allowed to date so go ahead and think of your age right now divide it by 2 and add 7 don't date any girls younger than that so this should equal 21 I believe so now let's just go ahead and add a print statement don't need to do anything else so I'll just put something like um, S which would be my name like Bucky Roberts can date girls who are um, actually girls do this percenti or older and of course now we need to give it those uh pretty much uh, like pieces of information it asked for and this is what I name it age or the first one is my name and the second one is girls age so let's see if this works all right so Bucky can date girls 21 or older all right I am fine with that gotta go find me some 21 year old hottie now if anyone's listening give me a call all right so I'll talk you guys through this one more time real quick just so it sticks in your brain and you're pretty much a pro with it what we can do is we can write our own custom header file and any code we put in here as our program runs it pretty much grabs this file copies all the crap in it and pastes it right here and then your program compiles in in our program what we did is we took my age divided it by two and add seven to that value and it gave us the girl's age that you're allowed to date and I got 21 so I'm gonna pause this video go find some 21 year old hottie and I'll see you later